We live in the world. We look for our happiness in the world. But what does the world have to offer? Wealth, status, praise, sensual pleasures. But it also has the opposite. Loss of wealth, loss of status, criticism, pain. You can't have one side without the other. And if our happiness depends on everything being good all the time, we're in for a fall. So you have to look someplace else for happiness. And this is why we train the mind. Because the mind has a potential that can go beyond that. We can develop strength and conviction that what we do really does make a difference in our lives. It really does determine whether we're going to be happy or not. And that what we do can take us all the way to a happiness that doesn't change. When you're convinced of that, then you can make an effort to develop the qualities in mind that you need, like mindfulness, concentration, discernment, all of which are strengths as well. With mindfulness, you, you've learned lessons in your life, and you remember them, you keep them in mind. All too often, we learn lessons that we don't want to learn, and so we forget them. We learn that wealth is not reliable, status is not reliable, praise is not reliable, sensual pleasures are not reliable. But we keep trying to forget, and we go back to them again and again. But if you're mindful of the lessons you've learned about these things, that gives you more impetus to focus deeper into your mind, to work on developing good qualities wherever they may be. As the Buddha said, you want to avoid all forms of evil and develop skillfulness to its ultimate degree. To get the mind still, concentrated, and then you can use your discernment to peer into the mind, to see where that potential for true happiness is. This is where your happiness comes, and there's no fear, there's no anxiety. Because the happiness that can be found within can't be taken away by anyone else because they can't know it. As John Lee said, you, when you gain the noble attainments, nobody else has to know. And that way they're safe. They're totally yours and totally reliable. So work on the strength of the mind. We use the good things of the world as they come. When wealth comes, we can train ourselves to be generous, and that becomes a quality of our own mind. When status comes, we can use that status to help other people. That goodwill, that compassion, becomes a quality of our mind as well. When praise comes, you can learn how to be a little bit leery of that, because you wonder, well, when people are praising you, why are they praising you? What do they want? That keeps you heedful. And when pleasures come, you learn how to enjoy the pleasures that are in accordance with the Dharma, and abandon the ones that are not. And this way you can make use of the wealth of the world, status of the world, so it becomes part of the strength of your own mind. And when there's loss of wealth, you can use that as well, loss of status, criticism, pain. You can learn lessons there as well. All of it becomes food for your discernment. Now we're looking for happiness in the right place, inside, in the qualities that you can develop right here, right now.